Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Yokohama. Hey, welcome to Conservation Ag Update. We are on the road here at the Farm Progress Show in Decatur, Illinois, AKA the Soy City. I'm technology editor Noah Newman. We have a lot of exciting stuff coming your way over the next 10 plus minutes in this episode. In just a bit, we're actually gonna catch up with a central Illinois no-tiller who's gonna talk about his cover crop, no-till, strip-till journey. But first, we have McCain Vogel. He is somewhere here in Progress City, USA. Let's send it over to McCain. He has an update on something new here at the show. Thanks, Noah. As always, cover crops are a hot topic at this year's Farm Progress show. I caught up with Andy Umverfirth, who told me about a new cover crop seeder with an electric drive metering system. Here's Andy with some more details. So this is a unique system in that we can plant cover crops quickly and cost effectively. Cause you know, drills can be expensive to run, uh, spreading your cover crop on the ground without working it into the soil or making a pass with a spreader and then a tillage tool afterwards can be a little more uh, expensive, the cover crop seeder can do all that in one pass. So the way this works, we have a 32 and a half bushel hopper and that drops down uh, via our air delivery system to our deflectors and the deflectors spread the seed out evenly along the ground and then our rolling baskets in the back work that seed into the soil. Uh, this is available on rolling harrows up to 37 feet wide and it does have an electric drive system. Now for users that want to apply at variable rate, uh, we do have an optional Raven Isobus rate controller. So you can apply seed um, without having to worry about your ground speed. Stay tuned for more cover crop videos in the coming weeks. I'll also be checking back in in a few minutes, but for now we're gonna go back to Noah with a special guest. Thank you very much, McCain. Good stuff there. We are joined now by Dave Brown, local farmer for this week's Farmer Feature. And Dave, why don't you tell us about your operation? You're from right down the road here in Central we're Illinois. Not, we're not very far away from the Farm Progress Show site, about 12 miles to the west. And we are a uh, fifth generation now. My son's back. He is the sixth generation. And uh, he has kind of helped us uh, move our operation into thinking more in terms of regenerative agriculture, cover crops, no-till, getting a young person's perspective on how we should be going into the future. And I agree with him. I think there's a lot of things that we can start doing that will, one, give us a good return on investment and maybe be healthier for our soil. Yeah, I'm interested in hearing about that journey. You know, at what point did you realize we have to change how we're farming? We need to do less tillage. We, had, we need to add cover crops. How long have you guys been on that conservation journey? Well, we've, we've tried to do some no-till over the years, but this is very highly productive soil right here. So it's, it's a paradigm shift in the way we think here to, to take this highly productive soil and start doing less to get more. We got started, Noah, by needing cattle feed in 2012. It was a serious drought right through here. We didn't really have enough feed, so we started thinking about what we were going to do. We planted a combination of rye with some clovers and some other things. It was unbelievable. We got a big rain at Labor Day. We had a growth out there that was fed the cattle through January. We didn't wow. feed any hay. Oh my goodness. And so we're going, we're on to something here. We tried rye in the past, but not to this level. So now we're, we're like the green plant. We're doing no-till into that. These planters today are fabulous. Yeah. There's no reason not to try, try doing this. So there's a lot of opportunity. Our trouble is logistics, trying to get it all done in the fall. Yeah. Probably heard that before. Yeah, that, that's gotta be the biggest challenge, right? Time management, uh, I, I don't the, the window of with the weather and everything in the fall here, because in central Illinois, you deal with some pretty wild weather sometimes. Right? We do, it can be a wet fall or it can be a dry situation where you plant it and maybe then it wouldn't come up. But the rye program is very forgiving. You can plant that up to Thanksgiving or even into December, as long as you can get through the field and get it covered, it'll lay there until, until it gets to the temperatures to come up. And so, you know, that, that is one option we can use through this area. But I like the diversity of clovers and sun hemp and some of these other nitrogen fixing plants. But uh, we have uh, one land partner that has got us going organic. And no that's, a, that's a new experience for me. We planted sun hemp last year and it was up over my head. It was beautiful. <laughs> and you're about six uh, foot Yeah, five. it was, but it, it's a learning experience. It's continuing to be learning, to continue to educate yourself with magazines like what you, and the, and the articles that you go out and get. And so, uh, you know, that's one thing I love about farming. I've, I've never stopped learning. 
Yeah, and you don't stop in your role with uh, WAND News here. You're the ag reporter, and you talk to a lot of people in central Illinois. Do you feel like there's more of a push with a lot of the people you talk to towards con conservation practices? Yeah. Or? Yes, I think what we're seeing is some of the major corporations, some of our government programs are helping get farmers to reduce that risk. And so if there is, I don't see a risk myself, but it, it gives them maybe some confidence to go out and try some of these programs. Pollinator programs are very, uh, through the CSP programs, we're seeing a lot of that through here. But I like the idea of what we do by not doing expensive deep tillage, letting those roots do the work. And I'm not somebody who's just bought into the program, I'm somebody who believes in the program. Right, right. Okay, well anything you're looking forward to seeing here at Farm Progress Show this week? Any specific product, technology, or theme you're just looking to kind of capture as you go and interview people? Good point. There's there's some uh, reduced uh, strip till. There's strip till's one. a big one. The hat uh, right here. Got the hat right yep. here. That, I think, in this area, in this highly productive soils, could be a win-win for many farmers. I'm looking at the strip till bars. There's a cover crop uh, planter that doesn't do a lot of, it just gets seed to soil contact, that kind of thing. It's uh, there's so many innovations. I don't I, you know which one. Don't know where to start. You know, yep. If the if the bank account was endless, I'd have it all. <laughs> all right. Well, thank, you know, thanks for taking the time well, to do this. Really appreciate yeah, it. We appreciate your work and and your guidance that uh, you're going out and learning and you're sharing with us. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we thank you, Dave Brown, McCain Vogel. We'll send it back to you. Had to stop and have a little bit of fun outside the Illinois Soybean Association tent. Speaking of soybean growers and no-tillers. Growers should be cognizant of tire tread and specs. Here's James Tushner from Ag Tire Talk going over a quick 101 crash course on things you should know about tires. James Tushner with Ag Tire Talk here. Today we're going to talk about stubble damage and things you can do to prevent it on tires. So the first thing I want to talk about is steel belted tires. You can buy tractor tires with a steel belt in the tread face. So what does that do with those tough hybrid corn stalks? It really makes it far harder to penetrate this tread casing. So that's one thing you can do is look for a steel belted tire. There are also select sizes of all steel casing tires, which the steel actually envelopes the sidewall as well. Clearly that's another barrier to keep those corn stalks from entering into the sidewall with the steel casing. The last thing I wanna talk about is a stubble resistant compound. Not all rubber compounds are created equally. Look for a stubble resistant compound in the tires that you purchase. You should also look for a stubble guard warranty that all the major manufacturers have and compare them to make sure you get the very best. Thank you very much, McCain. Great tire talk there. Now, of course, here at the Farm Progress Show, a lot of the focus is on the new technology, the new products coming to market. I mean, it feels like you're in a science fiction movie sometimes out here with some of the equipment we see and the new technologies. And there's been a lot of buzz about TerraCamp's Nexat system, which we've heard about in recent months but this is the first time we're actually seeing it in person. It's a massive machine that is pretty much all in one. It could perform harvesting tasks. It could spray, it could plant, pretty much any crop related task you can think of. This machine can do it. We caught up with the CEO, Joseph Jandrish, and he says, yeah, there's a lot of benefits to this machine, but his main motivation for creating it had to do with soil health. Take a listen. The true benefit we offer is to improve the health of the soil um, by reducing compaction, staying on a 50 foot wide tram line and never ever going over the middle 50 feet. And it's uh, focused on automation. And you see a cab on the machine, but the cab is there mostly just to allow the farmer or operator to ride along. The machine will navigate autonomously, uh, A, B line, turn around the headlands. Um, we don't need a square field. It could be the shape of a duck or whatever. Uh, so we'll plan in a path. We'll use uh, AI, fancy word, but uh, plot in the best and most efficient path through the field so that we can stay off of areas that might be compacted. With that, we get better moisture penetration, more nutrients deep in the soil, deeper roots. Um, after a few years of use, we find less need for synthetic nutrients, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and some micronutrients. And it's easier on the operator. Uh, you'll ride along and you'll, you no, don't need to navigate, you'll just watch the process of the harvest and be able to intervene um, maybe there's a deer on your row line during harvest, or maybe when you're planting, there's uh, the, one, of the, one of the rows is getting plugged in, so you can watch that process. Very cool to see the next ad here up close and in person. We'll have more from Joseph's interview coming soon to the Farm Innovations YouTube page. All right, it is time for our video slash photo of the week. 
And this one is about Alex Harrell, Georgia strip tiller who shattered the soybean world record with a 206 bushel yield. Yeah, he broke Randy Dowdy's record and he used strip till and cover crops as part of his record breaking system. So he used a Schlegel rapid till strip till unit. And guess what? The guy who sold him that unit is here at the show. We caught up with him to talk about what it was like when he saw the record breaking news. He was actually the first rapid till we sold in South Georgia when I came to work here. Um, Alex was running a, a bigger, heavier machine that, that ripped a little bit deeper. And uh, Alex is a, obviously a pretty progressive guy. So uh, him being able to pick up and uh, use a new machine and, and try to make that work. Uh, and it turned out to be a success for him was a pretty cool story to us. I mean, we, we've sold these all over the country and uh, all different kinds of crops and uh, different farms. Um, but to have somebody be a world record holder with, with our machine was, uh, it's pretty awesome. And that's just the tip of the iceberg of what we've seen out here this week at the Farm Progress Show. Our editorial team has captured tons of videos and be on the lookout for those coming soon to notillfarmer.com, striptillfarmer.com, also covercropstrategies.com as well. Big thanks to McCain Vogel, who's running around here at the show and checking in throughout the broadcast. And again, if you have any story ideas or comments, send me an email at nnewman at lespub.com. You see it on the bottom of your screen. All right, that'll do it here from the Farm Progress Show. For Conservation Ag Update, I'm Noah Newman. Have a great day.